Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here's your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil Markets. Paris Rapeseed. I have recently been away attending domestic and international technical analysis conferences and representing ADM at such events. So when I've come back to look at these daily charts, it is in many ways with a fresh set of eyes. Here is what I can see here right now. Well, since mid-June the market has been trapped. Uh, is trapped the right word? Yeah, I think it is. Trapped. Trapped between a congestion band below between 438 to 445 and three quarters and a congestion band above between 513 and three quarters to 519 and a half. Since we fell into this trap, we have also seen the construction of a head and shoulders pattern, possibly a top, though it has still not been confirmed. Plus, it has an extension of the second shoulder from mid-August until the start of October. Now, I've highlighted the preliminary neckline in dark blue, and that's currently a 448 and a half. And I will speak again about this pattern. But first, there is another pattern I'd like to discuss, and that is the previously mentioned in earlier videos, small late July to early September ascending triangle. This pattern is highlighted in purple on my daily chart. Prices broke out and below this pattern in early September and reached the primary target in the 461 and three quarter zone in just over a week. However, it took until last week for the market to reach the secondary target X at 430 even. The problem prices have with trying to reach down to the secondary target is that we had and still have a lot of congestion in the way, mainly between 445 and three quarters to a 438 even. Now, it looked last week as if prices had finally managed to break lower, but the market turned back up and into the congestion again with a, a hammer pattern that led to a gap higher. Nevertheless, prices are below the neckline of the possible head and shoulders top, though they seem to be doing their best to try to push back above the neckline right now. I am not happy as yet to detail any potential targets below for such a head and shoulders top pattern, but I think it may not be too long before I decide one way or another. As a guide, keep an eye on that gap just below and see if it gets filled or if it doesn't. <laughs> Winnipeg Canola. This market, somehow, still seems to be on a different schedule here compared to the other markets. The key patterns here have been the July to late September double top, one which I had doubts about many times, but which we've seen play out in both primary and secondary targets. Then below, the mid-April to early July reverse head and shoulders bottom, specifically the neckline highlighted in purple on my daily chart, and that's currently at 7.05 even, which is still influencing the market. And finally, what I consider the most important pattern here, bar perhaps the neckline, and that's the bearish Andrews pitchfork created by the earlier double top, the mid-July to late August bearish Andrews pitchfork, which is highlighted in bright red on my daily chart. On this last pattern, the market is at the moment in between the middle time below, currently at 699.60, and the upper time above, currently at 745, even. The market has exhibited an affinity for the middle time since mid-September. Okay, so the overall pressure has been bearish with the double top and then the bearish Andrews pitchfork. However, enter now the previously mentioned neckline in purple, which despite moving lower has started to slow the decline and even moved the market away from the center time and towards the upper time. This situation cannot last, as by the middle of the end to the end of November, these two will have a crossover. So I expect to see an eventually, one eventually to dominate the other. And I further suspect this may happen a lot sooner than by the middle or end of November. So keep a close, close eye on that purple neckline as what the market does there will, I believe, become significantly important for the future. One final point, and that is also to keep an eye on the rising medium moving average, currently at 751.90, the declining long moving average, currently 761.60, and the declining short medium moving average, currently 765.80.80. At the least, we might have a possible dead cross soon of the short medium moving average moving down through the long moving average. At the most, well, despite them being in the wrong order, 
we might have a possible three moving average bow tie formation in the offing. Watch this space. Bursa Malaysia crude palm oil. The mid-August to early November 2022, that's right, August to November 2022, mildly bearish shift petrol. The one highlighted in dark green on my daily chart is still running the show here after so, so many months. This mildly bearish pitchfork has guided prices more or less lower. Initially, in between the upper time currently at 4072 and the middle time currently at 3440. Then for a while in May and June between the middle time and the lower time currently at 2808 before moving back up again in between the middle and upper times. The action back in July saw prices form a diamond pattern type from July through to early September. And it was in early September that we saw prices punch down and out of this diamond pattern type. The primary target X for this pattern is in the 35 79 zone, with a harder to reach secondary target X1 down in the 3375 zone. The primary target X was achieved two weeks ago, but the harder to reach secondary target X1 is still open in the 3375 zone. Last time I also detailed two new influences on this market, the bearish Andrews and Schiff pitchforks for the late July to early September move. Both pitchforks, pitchforks initially looked good, but the market eventually chose the bearish shift pitchfork, the one highlighted in bright green on my daily chart to lead the action lower. With action over September and early October around the middle time, currently at 35.65, but more recently around the upper time, currently at 37.93. Now, on the way up, uh, late last week and earlier this week, Prices punched through some resistances that became supports and are now resistances again. Notably, the medium moving average, currently at 37.39, and the short medium moving average, currently 37.46. Plus the 50%, well, the 50% Fibonacci line of the recent May to late June move at 37.06 is actually still support. The way the market punched up through the early moving average and then held strong by being capped by the slowly declining long moving average, currently at 38.25, makes me question the actual strength of the upper time and maybe suspect that it was just coincidence with it being so close to the long, mo long moving average and that it was really the long moving average that capped the rise. That is a question that in my mind is still open. Finally, I'd just like to put this idea out to you all to think about and see what you think. It is this. Does the action since early September, does it look like a reverse head and shoulders bottom in construction with one shoulder and the head formed? Or is it something else? I'll leave that open for now, as I'm hoping we may see a clear answer next time or soon thereafter. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Tofpik and ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.